please, folks, say hello to Ash, that Preston journalist. Hello, Ash. Evening, Alistair. You can hear me this week. I can hear you loud and clear, I'm glad to say. Um, Unlike last time when we had um, (laughs) technological differences, as they say. (laughs) Technological differences, yes, absolutely. Good, good. Well, I just want to say, Ash, you do a tremendous job on your YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash that Preston journalist. And um, what's the latest one that you put out today? Because you're putting out videos like every day now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I do four or five every day. Yeah, um, I don't know what was my last video that came out today. Um, Just too fresh for memory. Which one was it? it? Well, that's a good sign that you're doing so many. <laughs> yeah, you lose track. <laughs> yeah, well, I know you did a Gary Lineker one, but I think that was yesterday. Um, uh, no, that was this morning, Gary Lineker. Yeah, I, was, I can't I, believe his comments. Absolutely disgusting. How you can compare 1930s Germany to a, an a sensible immigration policy, or sensible in my opinion anyway, the first decent thing this so-called conservative government have actually tried to do. And then you calling him names like that is just unbelievable. Did you know that he's actually refusing to speak to the BBC now? He's ignoring them. Well, isn't he not employed by them? Yeah, but I think he's also on um, a self-employed basis, so he's he's paid as he works. But he does get paid a set wage, doesn't he? He gets paid $1.3 million or something if it, talking about football, which is extortion in my view anyway. But he um, he's refusing to speak to the BBC now because they're trying to make him take the tweet down and things like that, and he won't, simply won't do it. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, I don't know what to make of that guy at all, but as you say, get, getting paid uh, money to commentate on, on football uh, at that kind of level is just, that kind of uh, amount of money is just sort of absolutely absurd. Really, um, and I don't quite know why he became so big, anyway, and why no, he's I don't. particularly better than MDLs at it, you know. But no, he's not. You won't get it in the private sector. Only when it's public money would you get that kind of salary. Yeah, yeah, because it's not as if, if he, if um, you know, if he stood down, it's not as if nobody's going to watch football on the BBC anymore. You know, they just get some other commentator in and they can save money by paying whoever it is, you know, an awful lot less. So I don't, exactly. I, I don't, I don't get that at all. But the, the, the sub- substance of the issue, though, was um, the substantive matter was the British government's uh, Immigration Act. Do you have any thoughts on that? Because I noticed that it's been kind of uh, been knocked about for the last 48 hours or so. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, it's a very good act, and we'll 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 see if it gets through. I mean, it'll get through Parliament, no problem, of course, because the Tories have got still got a big majority, um, seventy, I don't know, seventy three or something like that, the majority. But it's getting to the Lords then, and then passing it to and from the Lords. The Lords will try and add amendments. There'll also be people like Theresa May who will try and stop it going through. Amazingly, despite the fact she's supposed to be a Conservative, but. This could be the one thing that could actually save this Conservative government. I believe if they manage to implement this policy correctly and actually get it working and show that it works by deporting people, then and the bolt stop, of course, then it would turn their fortunes around and they would probably go on to win the next general election if it works. But we've heard it so many times, haven't we? And that's why no one's really jumping for joy about it or anything like that because people like Pretty Patel have said it in the past. Other... Um, even when we voted for Brexit, we thought we were taking control of our borders. If anything, things have got worse. So no one's really getting their hopes up. But I certainly think it could be the one thing that changes that, that changes the playing field for them and makes them win the next general election. Especially as Sakia Starmer has absolutely no policies on the, on immigration whatsoever. He has no alternative. And if anybody saw the Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper yesterday for Labour responding to Suella Braverman. It was pathetic. She just stood there and shouted. She had nothing to say whatsoever on the subject. And it's quite clearly now, this is the this is going to be the big dividing line for the next general election. It's going to be, do you want mass immigration or do you not? If you don't, then vote Tory. If you do, then vote Labour. That's that's the way it's going now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's quite well summed up. And I, I hear what you're saying. I think so many people have become jaded now because 
take, for example, the Brexit vote. Now, whatever people say, I, I remain convinced that the only reason Brexit passed was because sufficient numbers of people thought that somehow we would get control over our own immigration policy again. Mm. And the the official bre- uh, pro-Brexit campaign didn't want to touch immigration as an issue, thought it was too um, problematical. And then Nigel Farage came on and made it an issue. And I do believe that it was his intervention pushing the idea that we'll get our control over our own immigration again uh, that made Brexit, uh, that swung the vote sufficiently by that few percentage to just get over the line and win. So people think, great, now we've got uh, control over our own immigration borders and policies again. But little did we know that the system would use that control just to keep doing exactly what it was doing. And in fact, to have even more people coming in, you know, so it seems like when the system or the government now turn around and say, well, you know what, after all these years, we've suddenly realized that this is an issue that we should address. You just feel jaded. It's like, yeah, you know, there's an election coming up next year and this you're yeah. selling us it selling us this this idea again which you've got no intention of doing anything about i hope i'm wrong i really hope i'm wrong Mm. but you mentioned there about it going back and forwards in parliament if the government wanted to we've seen it can pass an emergency it can pass laws in 48 hours it did that with the covid act Mm -hmm. Uh, it it said well you know we're not uh, we'll debate this for for a few hours but we're passing it anyway we're giving it to the lords and the lords have got to get it right back to us because this is the emergency legislation we're bringing it in and uh that's what we're going to do so this whole sending it back and forward it's ideal in a democracy but it's not necessary and if this was the emergency that they tell us which it actually is then they would just make it happen and they would have made it happen years ago exactly. years ago um, all these and of course, of the lo- sorry to interrupt you. It, no, the Lords can't even block it. Of course, I mean you can you can send it once. The Lords will send back amendments. The government can send it back again for a second time, as it was in the first place. The Lords can send it back again, but the third time, the Lords are obliged to simply give in, and they have to send it back to the Commons anyway, and that they have to let it go through. So it's just a pointless system, isn't it? I mean, the whole Lords, in my opinion, is a pointless system. Really, it's only there for nostalgia and tradition, or it should be, but. They, they can't block it anyway, so eventually it will get through. But it's just mm. how long it takes, and will it will it affect immigration numbers by the time the next general election comes around? Yeah, it depends what Keir Starmer and the Labour people are going to be saying about it. I mean, Keir Starmer has got a record of being very pro open borders. Mm-hmm. Um, back when he was younger, he was very pro open borders and I downloaded today a, a, an article that he had written about it but albeit back in 1988 so he was very very young at the time but nevertheless he and so much of the well so much of our modern political class come from this uh, open borders point of view that doesn't really see the point of maintaining uh, distinctions between nation states and uh just wants, well, I don't really quite know what they want. It's almost like they want anarchy. I mean, I was, yeah. and, 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 and like the SNP are the worst for this. I mean, they're so open about open borders. It's beyond belief, uh, whether they're at, at Westminster or whether they're at Holyrood. And I know why, because all of these people, like not a single one of these MPs are or uh, MSPs of the SNP lives even in in any kind of what you might call an uh, an area with anything other than white people in it because they live in Scotland, and if you live in rural Scotland, I mean it's just completely white basically, mm. apart from like a Chinese restaurant or something like that which has been there <laughs> since the nineteen seventies. So they don't they don't live in the world that's changing that's changing in huge areas of England, for example. They don't live in that world. And as for London, well, London's a different case altogether. It's just yeah, this it is. Uh, huge metropolitan area, which is kind of divorced from the rest of the rest of England, let alone Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. <laughs> so so <are> the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do you see uh, Keir Starmer having any uh, hope up? Because I mean, he may well break down the so-called red wall 
and get these voters back again. Do you see that likely next year? He's in a very difficult situation. He's really in the ultimate catch-22 at the minute because the red wall, if you look at the polling, shows that the, these are just normal working-class people and they just want their towns, their cultures, their cities, whatever, to remain the same, to remain England, basically, instead of importing all these people and filling hotels with them, etc. Keir Starmer, as you pointed out, is very pro-open borders and no matter what he says to the media, that's still his belief. He's still some left-wing anarchist underneath. Rishi Sunak today called him just another lefty lawyer trying to stand in our way. And even if you look at Starmer's approval ratings in the Red Wall, it's only about 38%. Sunak's got about 34 So really, it just goes to show that these people are not set on going back to Labour. I mean, they come from generation after generation who have voted Labour all their lives. Like, take somewhere like Liverpool, for example. I mean, you get a criminal record there if you vote Tory. Because people, people just vote people just vote Labour because their granddad did and their dad did and it's just the way it goes, that's just the way the place is. And a lot of these people change their minds, not in Liverpool, but in the Red Wall, throughout the 2019 general election. And once you decide to vote another way one time, yeah, you might not want to vote Tory, but they did, even though it might have hurt them inside. If you've done it once, you'll do it again. Especially if you don't like the the leader of the opposition and they might not even like Rishi Sunak that much but he's still just about neck and neck with Keir Starmer all the time it just goes to show that Starmer hasn't had any cut through it's just that we've had such a hopeless Tory government that's changing leaders whenever it feels like it and scandal after scandal that's left Labour in the position where it is and even if we look at polls not just in the Red Wall but uh, UK uh, England wide at least the Tories have gained on average about three points recently and Labour have dropped between two and four since this Sue Gray business came out. So it just goes to show that Labour's lead, although formidable certainly, is flimsy. It's Starmer's in, Starmer is no way sewn up the next general election. You know, that's, that's, that's an interesting comment uh, and the extent to which that any gain that he might have is simply just because the the, the Tories have appeared um, s- s- poor, you know. Yeah, at, to at, say the at, least. Then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm trying to be diplomatic here for all of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, abs- ab- absolutely. That, um, And so what they're going to try to do, is, as you alluded to at the start of our conversation, is the Tories are going to try to make immigration the big issue for the next mm. 12 months yeah. uh, and really talk tough about it. And, well, that's at least talking tough is something, I suppose. But whether they'll actually do tough uh, remains to be seen because, as we know, the British system and indeed the Western world is entangled in all sorts of like human, so-called human rights uh, laws and so on that have been in place for scores of years since the end of World War II, um, tightening up all these kind of rules and regulations and so on that they've got very limited room for manoeuvre unless they literally just have a revolution and say we're just throwing all these laws off the statute book and we're making a new law and here it is and we're just going to go ahead with it and 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 have a, have a clean out of uh, like border force um which is i only recently learned that border force is unionized now nothing against uh, unions as such but border force is essentially a security arm which you can't have that unionized you know it's like you can't have the army unionized you can't have people who are literally defending the country you can't have that unionized because that's going to be open to to uh to well, people who want open borders, who are running these particular unions, and the union that Border Force is part of, is run by that guy Mark Sorotqua, or whatever it is, who's like a yeah. Hard they tried line. to take the government to court. Yeah, yeah. For he, being told to do the jobs. Exactly, exactly. He's a hardline open border, open borderist, <laughs> and and so you can't you, you can't you can't keep your country safe, uh, if that's who's essentially you know, going to be running your border no. force. So the, all of that has to just get cleaned away, swept away and changed over. And that is a revolution, you know, and, and that's what people thought they were voting for when they voted for Brexit. But of course, we don't have the politicians and the MPs who are who are going to stand up for that. Well, hey, maybe, maybe Kate Forbes or Hamza Yusuf will stand up for it 
not. <laughs> Talk, talking of that, uh, do you have a, a favourite that you'd like to see win the S- Scottish, S- rather the SNP election? I can't possibly have a favourite. I don't. I don't like any of them. Let's truth be told. I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll say one thing for Kate Forbes. At least she was honest about her beliefs and her religious beliefs. And uh, obviously she was dragged over hot coals for it, whereas it seems that Hamza Yusuf, for some reason, wasn't, despite doing exactly the same thing that Kate Forbes had done and actually believing the same religious conservative policies that she believes in. At Mm. least she stood by her principles. Hamza Yusuf blatantly lied and said that he didn't vote against this bill. He had an urgent meeting when Alex Salmond completely trashed that, didn't he? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I wonder why he didn't get uh, pulled up on that in the way that Kate Forbes did. That's yeah, a, exactly. It's mm, a difficult question to answer. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, I, I wonder why. Yes, well, like you, I don't have a favourite or even a preferred one, really. Um, but whatever one we get, they're all crackpots in the sense that they all want to break up the greatest nation that ever existed, which is called mm-hmm. the United Kingdom. And that in itself tells you that they have no sense they have no sense because they literally want to divide the british people against themselves and i mean why on earth would you make that your be all and and end all of and the essence of your political point of view here's a here's an article here i'll demand referendum within 90 days says forbes you know so so um that's uh 90 days of her either winning the most MPs in Scotland or 90 days within winning the most votes of the people who happened to vote on the day. Apparently that's sufficient to basically destroy the United Kingdom, which has been coming together for hundreds of if not thousands of years. Yeah, thanks you know, very much. What, what they should have done, if I was any of those three people, I would have stayed away from independence completely. I would have talked about the things that actually matter, the things that are going wrong. You know the list, so do I. Education, health, ferries, you, you name it. Everything's crumbling. I would have stayed well away from independence I've actually got some new polling here from Redfield and Wilton that was done in the last couple of days, and it shows that the support for a new independence referendum in the next 12 months is at 34%. That is minus 12 points from just a couple of weeks ago. Sorry, from a couple of months ago. And only 40 and 49% oppose it. That's plus 6 points. And even for a referendum to be held in the next 5 years, 44% oppose it. That's plus 4. And 37% oppose it. Sorry, support it. That's minus 9. The best thing these lot could have done is talked about the real issues that are affecting people's lives because it's obvious that support for independence in any form of referendum has absolutely fallen off a cliff. But what does Kate Forbes do? As you just said, she said that she'd demand a referendum. Well, Sturgeon tried doing that and she lost her job. Then you've got Ash Regan. She's come out and said, I'll just simply declare it. Like, How can you just declare it? She she has run the worst. I put out a tweet the other day actually saying, uh, "Ash Reagan has won the worst camp- run the worst campaign since Hannibal tried to get his elephants to cross the Alps." She has been absolutely dreadful. I have never seen such a poor campaign in years. I, at first, I thought she was quite principled for resigning over the anti women's bill, but then all of a sudden she's asking for the stone of destiny to be kept in Scotland. She's on about an independence thermometer and. It seems that she's lost the plot ever since she became the candidate. I think it's all gone to her head or something. Yeah, yeah, I think the the latter is got kept just kind of carried away with the excitement of it all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, have a have an independence thermometer somewhere in Glasgow, which I couldn't will, believe that. Which somehow it indicate <laughs> like a blue Peter, the, the blue Peter thing that they used to have back in the eighties yeah. when I was growing up, um, to show how many bottle tops have been collected. Well, that's probably what we're going to have to happen. We're going to have to start collecting bottle tops for Scotland. <laughs> that's a whole new topic, isn't it? Don't, don't start depositing bo- uh, recycling bottles, for God's sake. That's another, <laughs> that's another disaster. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There's also another poll, if I can just show it with you as well, that's just yeah, come out. Yeah. This is from the... This is after one of the... Uh, that live tele- televised debate last night. And it's... Um, uh, Humza Yusuf has now dropped into second place after that debate, according to Redfield and Wilton. He's now on 18%, whereas Kate Forbes has gone up to 25%. And 
and Ash Reagan is just languishing down on 14. Right, right. So well, it's, maybe it's that, turning on him. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the the election for leadership is going to be done by a single transferable vote. So each person who's voting will get three votes, the first preference, second preference, third preference. And after the the first person drops out, their preferences, their, their uh, second preferences get rearranged either to to one or the other of the remaining candidates. Yeah. So what can actually happen is somebody can win the most first preferences, but they actually lose because a sufficient number of second preferences have gone to uh, to the other candidate. So Surely you'd think that Reagan's votes are going to go... She's going to come third, isn't she, let's face it. They're, yeah. they're going to go to Kate Forbes, aren't they? The majority, you'd think. I think that, that that's right. So if Humza got the most first-past-the-post votes, Ash Reagan's second preferences could go to Kate Forbes, and if it was very close, that could be enough to tip Kate Forbes to be the actual, the actual winner. Well, he's the only one that supported the anti-women's bill. The other two, cleared, although Kate Forbes never said it publicly, she never actually supported the bill. So 70% of Scots, according to polling, also opposed the bill. So surely those people aren't going to vote for someone that would potentially try and still bring that anti-women's bill through. You, you exactly. Think. Exactly. Uh, um, um, I think that uh, all of Ash Regan's votes, as you say, will go to... All of Ash Regan's second preferences will go to Kate Forbes. You would thought in a, in a, in a, in a rational, in a rational universe, although I'm not quite sure how rational the <laughs> SNP membership universe actually is um, for that matter. But yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting, but the good news from our perspective is it is going to throw and it has thrown the SNP onto the back foot. They're going to take time, uh, considerable time to recover from this. Um, and they might they might lose they might fall back actually where we have to hope at the next general election and the idea of breaking up the United Kingdom well it's always going to be around because they're always going to be powerful and they're always going to have their speakers so we're always going to have our work cut out for us but we've got a little bit of breathing space yeah is, uh, I think. you could have given me Alistair a, p a pen and a piece of paper and asked me to write down my ideal scenario for Sturgeon going, and I couldn't have written it any better than what she did herself. It was absolutely perfect. She left the whole place in turmoil. The party's got no plan. They're completely rudderless without her. I don't, God knows I don't like her, but she was a, a decent communicator, and let's face it, she won mm. many elections. Yeah. And without, without her, and without Salmond, they've lost their only two decent communicators. That's it. Without them, they're rudderless. They've got nobody. Yeah. That's right. I think the modern expression is she played herself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. She, she managed to turn the entire nation against her, even her own supporters. I know. It was incredible. I, I was so happy to see it. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was brilliant, and it was it was so <laughs> unexpected as well. Catherine Rainey says we've got the wrong people in power. You two would be much better. Well, I'll take the salary. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. We certainly would be much better. I don't, that's that. That's that's for absolutely sure. Um, um, there you go. Ian Ingster says, Ash Regan's plan is for Scotland to self-identify <laughs> as independent. <laughs> absolutely. Oh. That's, that's a good, good one. <laughs> Derek, good seeing Ashley. And yes, we can hear him tonight. That's right. Mm. Hi, Derek. Stephen says, any political party with a manifesto of grudge and grievance will never convince any credible voter. Absolutely. No, that's, that's true. That's, that, 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 that is so. And, and that the, stands to reason, doesn't it? Because if, mm. if the SNP had been more sensible, perhaps, about their policies and not just talking about independence all the time, who wants to say they couldn't have won over more, more voters if they'd have pursued a more Trumpian, pro Trumpian approach, like a Scotland first policy, rather than let's go it alone and ditch everybody else? Mm. Who knows? Oh, yeah. yeah, I think they would have done much better. And I think they would have had a lot of people, um, they would have had more people supporting them. Uh, the, the thing is, the, the big problem is the, the, the core policy, which is to take to take our identity away from us. You know, mm. a huge number of people in Scotland identify as Scottish and British. And the SNP say, no, you can't have that. You, you, yeah. We're going we're gonna to get rid of your British identity. 
I mean, and that's that's a problem with with nationalism throughout the British Isles. Is it 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 does not accept like whether you're Welsh, Irish, or Scottish, or even English nationalists. They don't accept that there's also a British identity in these islands. No, and they don't respect it. They don't accept it. They don't respect it, and they want to destroy it. And that's that's the 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 bad thing that that these nationalisms share. I know we've said it in the past between us as well, but just look at how people felt left behind and ignored by Westminster when all it was took all it took sorry was one intervention one section 35 order to stop that gender bill and look what happened straight away Sturgeon was gone it just showed how flimsy their position was they've dropped in the polls independence has fallen off a cliff and all right Rishi might not be that popular but the SNP are dropping in the polls all it took was one intervention and exactly. I suppose they had to pick and choose their moment, but they had so many chances to stand up to Sturgeon, and it was just appeasement, appeasement, appeasement. Every time she wanted something, she got it. And hopefully, they can learn from this because they've, you know, they've really, um, uh, what's the word? They've really knocked them for six, haven't they? Just by doing that one section thirty-five order. Exactly, exactly. Uh, they've really delivered the goods far and away of anything that they, that any of us could possibly have imagined. And on that very positive note. Ash, that's 25 minutes of shot by. Uh, just yep. once again, you can be found at youtube.com forward slash that Preston journalist, all one word. And you are also on twitter.com forward slash AK writing 88. Yep. And you're posting on those two platforms every day. And good stuff as well. So, Ash. We'll have you back as soon as we possibly can, just to say thanks very much for your work and more power to your elbow. Thank yeah, you. thanks, Alistair, and thank you to everybody else. I'll uh, I'll speak to you soon. Great stuff. See you again. See you later. Bye bye.